my biggest issue as a teacher teaching math and even teaching science or whatever uh, is how I felt when I was a student. Okay? So, uh, you know, I do a lot of things that I do because of the, the situations that I was in when I was a student or my peers uh, were in when we were students uh, that frustrate us. And I try to fix those things and try to uh, help alleviate those. And one of the things that I really struggled with uh, was more of the understanding of what's going on and why we can do what we do. Okay? You could have given me any algorithm, any procedure, step-by-step -step thing, and say, do this. Give me the steps, and I can do it. Okay? And I can repeat them over and over and over again, not a problem. Do the, do the algebra, not a problem. But my issue was the why. Okay? Uh, I really, really, really hate giving you guys a relationship and saying, this relationship always works, just take my word for it, and we'll move on. Okay? I want you to understand why it works. Okay? So I like the proof part of things in this course, um, because I think that allows you, if you are a person that ever gets confused about what to do, you can always kind of maybe unravel the issue by thinking about, well, why does something work, okay? And then if you understand why it's working, then maybe you can understand what to do. Um, and it also allows us to do a lot of things beyond this class in a lot easier fashion if we understand why, okay? So I'm gonna, we're going to talk about some, um, some more proportions today, but I want you to see where they come from. So I'm going to take just this blue triangle, and I'm going to create the similarity statement in regards to the big overall triangle. So let's just start with the big overall one, which was ABC. And that should be similar then to, would you say A is in both those? Uh, B was the right angle up here, so i got to write D next here, and then we're going to finish at B, correct? So those two triangles should be similar. And from that, we gain three ratios. And they should equate to one another. So this is all you know, stuff we've been doing. We should be able to say AB compares to AD. We should be able to say uh, BC compares to DB. And we should be able to finish off saying AC compares to AB. Okay. So that, all that's saying, guys, is that this, this figure here, this blue one, is proportional to the big one, right? It's a scaled-down inversion of the big one. And these, these values, whatever they may end up being, are that scale factor that would allow me to scale it down or scale it up. Does that make sense? Okay. If I look at this, though, I'm going to look through here and see if I can find of the six parts that are defined here, are there any repeats? Okay. For instance, AD is only going to show up one time out of these six things, right? So AD is not a repeat. BC is not a repeat. DB is not a repeat. Which one's repeat here? AB. So I'm going to try to pick out the two that AB repeats it. I'm going to write this as AB is equal to AD equal to AC over AB. Okay. Now, I don't necessarily like looking at it that way, but we should know that if this is an equation, every equation can be read left to right or right to left, correct? So can I read that? Does that say the same thing? What do you notice now? about where a b is in both those things it's in the means location right and we said when those means are the same thing we call them geometric means right Does that makes sense everybody okay now let's go back up and let's actually look at what a b is what would this distance a b be called for the overall right triangle It's a leg, okay? The, the sides that make up the right angle for a right triangle are referred to as legs, okay? So again, we're looking, I'm asking that question in regards to just that triangle. The yellow one would be a leg for it, right? Okay? So I'm going to write, I'm just going to erase this. Instead of saying AB, I'm just going to write the word leg. 
and then right here, I'm gonna write the word leg. Okay. Now, what's AC for this overall triangle? The hypotenuse. Okay. So I'm gonna get rid of AC. I'm gonna write hypotenuse. Okay. Now, the remaining part, and and I need this to do that. Okay. AD then is this little segment here of that hypotenuse, right? Okay. So the way we refer to that, would you guys agree that A, the, the hypotenuse, this point D, you need this point D. If you don't have that point D, this none of this works. Okay. So that means we need to have this thing, which is an altitude that has to be existing or none of this works. It finds point D for us. Okay. Would you agree that point D Come on. Point D breaks up your hypotenuse into two parts. Right? No matter what right triangle you're going to be in, you draw this altitude down, that point of intersection is going to divide your hypotenuse into two parts. Would you guys agree that this part touches this leg at A? This part does not? Okay. So what goes here, the way we talk about AD, is that we say it's the part of hypotenuse that touches said leg or used leg or whatever you want to say. It's the leg that we put in the proportion already. That denominator on the right is a part of that hypotenuse that was touching that leg. Okay? And that then is a relationship. That proportion that we just have there, that is a relation that exists in every single right triangle when you draw the altitude to its hypotenuse. Okay? Now, here's what I want you to understand. We, we have to have this altitude. Okay? If we don't have that altitude, let's say that I have that drawn in like that, where it's not perpendicular, okay? My hopes are that you realize that in angle angle, one of those A's was the right angle, right? Well, now in those two smaller triangles, do I have any right angle? No. So I don't have that A, that second A for angle angle existing. Meaning which then I don't have the, the other A existing as well. Okay? So in that situation, I've only got um, maybe one angle congruent to one angle. I need ultimately three. Okay? Does that make sense? So it's got to be perpendicular so that we have those the second set of angles being congruent. All right? So this is how questions kind of vary as we move on through the course. They might give you a picture like this. And people are going to try to do what we're doing right now. Well, this picture does not meet. It does not meet this criteria right here. Okay, uh, and actually for today's stuff, it's really it's very similar. It's that criteria. When the altitude is drawn to the hypotenuse of a right triangle, you have to have that first. Okay. This says this is just um, kind of being more, maybe a little bit more deliberate than. Uh, what I just showed you on um, that last graphic, but um, this is going to provide you the two ratios that we go through. The corollary for that um, process of why we do this uh, is saying that we take each leg, so obviously AD is a leg, right? So we take each leg and it becomes a geometric mean. So I'm going to put AD there and AD there. This is each leg is the geometric mean between the hypotenuse. So now I go find what the hypotenuse is. So the hypotenuse for us would be that distance there, correct? So I'll put the hypotenuse right there. And then the last part is the part of the hypotenuse that is adjacent to or touching the red leg that we use. So what part of this hypotenuse? Is touching the red leg. AB, right? So AB needs to go there. 
Okay. The other part of the hypotenuse, okay, it's the segment addition postulate, guys. The other part of the hypotenuse would be that green one, right? Well, does that green one ever touch this red segment? No. Okay. It's the blue one that touches the red one. Okay. Now I've got two ratios here. I got some ratio, two proportions here. Because how many legs does every right triangle have? Every right triangle has two legs, right? So let's look at this leg here. So that leg is the geometric mean. So it goes there and there. Between the hypotenuse, which again, there is your hypotenuse, right? AC. Now, what part of the hypotenuse is touching the red leg now? BC, right? So BC needs to go there. I, I, I prefer to teach and talk and use that type of imagery with you and, and use um, you know these distances out or the geometric kind of definition for distance uh, to develop those uh, proportions because those those now if we understand how we gain those I can enter uh, place or sorry replace I guess A B C D with any other letters that they want to be and go through the exact same process right okay um, some of you might not like that that might be a little bit abstract so look over here okay. Uh, these might be things that you want to write down in your notes. You might want to write down the top of your homework or your homework. Um, this is the, the proportion that exists from what we talked about on Friday, where it says the interior altitude is the geometric mean, the interior altitude being, and for some reason this doesn't work right now, uh, the interior altitude being D to B, okay? It's the altitude on the inside, okay? Uh, now, the reason I call it that one because legs, Legs are also altitudes for right triangle. Okay, so every right triangle has three. And we talk about that when we talk about ortho centers. Um, that's the one, that's the only one that's on the inside. So it goes in those two spots, the geometric mean location. And then this is part of the hypotenuse, and that's the other part of the hypotenuse. Okay. Over here, if we're looking at the leg as being a geometric mean, and, and we, I kind of wrote this on a uh, smart notebook a little bit ago, you put the leg here and there. Okay, the mean location, and then up here you put whole hypotenuse, and then down here you'll be part of that hypotenuse touching the same way. And I got this times two here, because there's actually two four, two proportions wrapped up in that, right? Looking at leg one and leg two, or leg AD over there, uh, and leg DC. Okay. Um, A lot of times we, you know, and we mentioned this earlier, I said, um, by definition, an altitude is any segment that goes from a vertex perpendicular to the opposite side, right? And, and DB, we're seeing, does that. DB is, D is the vertex perpendicular to this opposite side, AC. But doesn't this line here, starting at A, moving to D, doesn't that start at a vertex go perpendicular to the opposite side? Okay, so AD, or your leg, is also an altitude. So if we think about it, every time we've got three proportions here, every single proportion in the geometric means location are altitudes. Okay, whether you call those altitudes legs or not is ultimately up to you. Okay, um, is this okay? Uh, you will have... Um, on the end of course exam, a reference sheet, okay, which I think is, to be perfectly honest with you, I think reference sheets are bogus. I, I think they're, they're, they're silly and dumb to have uh, because it forces people to say, oh, I don't need to, I don't need to learn this. I'm going to have something to look at. Well, what happens with reference sheets is there might be, you know, 15, 20 facts on there. You might actually use two of them, but then, you know, where are all the other facts coming from that I need to be able to progress through the the test with, right? They're not all on it. The, I've never seen these relationships on uh, reference sheets, but I have seen these relationships being asked on, and of course, exams, 
uh, when the OGT used to exist as well in there. Um, it is a question that test creators like to, to incorporate. Okay. Um, so let's do let's do an example. And, and I'm going to kind of I, I think it's a good idea early on to maybe systematically uh, work through these problems all kind of the same way. Okay. I'm going to write three proportions for every single problem I come across if I need them or if I don't. Okay. So the first thing I always do is always kind of look at this and say, okay, that's a leg, right? There should be a proportion that goes with that leg. And then I say, okay, I'm going to move into this one. And that's, a, that's an altitude. It's the interior altitude. There should be a proportion that goes with that one. And then I'm going to look at this leg here. And there should be a proportion that goes with that one. Okay? So you get these three lines that are emitting from the right angle, right? They come from the right angle. There should be a proportion that incorporates every one of those. And each one of those lines that comes out of Q is going to be a geometric mean. Is that all right with everybody? So let's just start with Y. Actually, let's start with the Z one because I think that might be, because it's what we did on Friday, might be a little bit more... A little bit easier for us to come up with. That's an altitude, right? And we we had the theorem that said the the altitude is the geometric mean. Now it said between what? The theorem said the parts of the hypotenuse. Would you agree that 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 green part and that red part? So I'm gonna put two here. I'm gonna put four there. Is that all right with everyone? Okay. I'm not going to solve that because I'm I'm in the mode of, of creating proportions. Okay. Um, and this is just something that you guys are going to have to kind of decide on your own how you do it. I like to create them all at once and then go back and solve them all at once. Is that a leg? Okay. So a leg is a geometric mean. So it goes there and it goes there. Now try to follow this pattern because it's, and I like to color on top of them and I follow the same kind of coloring pattern all the time. I colored the leg, now I'm going to go color the hypotenuse. So what would that length be? Six, and I, so I put that there. It's the geometric mean between the hypotenuse and then the part of the hypotenuse that's touching the black leg, which would be Okay. Is that all right with everybody? So now we're trying to follow that same kind of coloring pattern with the other leg to create my third proportion. So there's my leg. So that's my geometric mean there and there. Now I'm going to color the entire hypotenuse, which would be 6 again. And now the part of the hypotenuse that's touching that leg would be right okay now in this one in this example you did not need to find X before you found Y or Z before you found X or something like that right you could have independently found any one of those variables at any time that you wanted to okay when you see these questions a lot of people try to say I'm gonna try to solve for X first and I'm not gonna move on to Y until I find X well that might be impossible okay uh, you might not be able to solve X until you know what Y and Z both are. Does that make sense? Okay. So write your proportions first. Write all three proportions out first. Then go through and start manipulating those and seeing how you can solve those individually. Okay. Um, right now, all of our variables are in the means location, right? That's not always going to be the case. The variables can show up anywhere. It's just kind of happenstance that occurred that they all showed up there um, in the means location. So, Jalen, because you hate radicals so much, let's evaluate these. What's 2 times 4? 8. So then Z is going to be a square root of 8, right? Is everybody okay with that? All right, type that in, you're wrong. Okay? Because we have to simplify. So we're looking for the greatest perfect square that divides 8 and provides an integer. So it's 4. Okay, but the trick that I use 
Okay? And if you, if you use this, what you're doing, it, it, logically it's not that hard. But uh, uh, it's like a graduate level concept that you deal with in, in graduate school and college. Okay? You're looking for factors of eight. Okay? So factors of eight, we're looking for integers, right? Like one and eight, two and four. Does that make sense? Okay? I want to produce something bigger than one because eight divided by eight is one, right? Whatever I put under there, I can divide by itself and get one. I'm not really interested in one, it's trivial, okay? So I'm looking for the next integer. What's the next integer after one? Two. What can I divide eight by so I get two? Four. What if that eight was a 12? What would I divide by to get two? Six, right? So when I'm looking for perfect squares, biggest perfect squares, I only need to look for the ones that are less than half of that number. So what is, or less than or equal to? So we take that 8 divided by 2, right? And I get 4. Does 4 divide 8 evenly? Yeah, right? 4 works, and when I divide 8 by 4, it gives me this 2, right? So there are my two factors for 8, developing one of them so it's a perfect square. What's the square root of 2? Or 4? 2. So we now just simplified that as 2 wrapped 2. Let's do this one real quick. Y equal, or y squared equals 12, right? Y would be root 12. What's half of 12? 6. So what perfect square is less than 6 that divides 12 evenly? 4, right? And it gives you 3 back when you do that. So you get root 4, root 3. What's square root of 4? 2. Okay? We'll continue working with that stuff. There is an assignment in Math Excel for tonight's work. Okay, so finishing this one off, we would have x squared equals 24. Uh, square root would be root 24. So now numbers that are less than 12 that are perfect squares uh, that might divide this. First one, they're obviously 4 and 9 are my only options. Uh, 4 does that. So it gives me root 4. 24 divided by 4 would give me 6. So those are my, you know, if I multiply those together, it gives me back to 24. The square root of 4 is 2, root 6. Six is simplified. Six is as far as it'll go because half of six would be three, and the only perfect square less than three is one, and that's trivial. Okay, one will always divide that, no matter what that six is. Uh, something to kind of be thoughtful of as we go on to these questions. So, um, hopefully, maybe when you get to your homework, if you're using this, uh, you can um, using these videos, you can pick up on this, but. Um, your variable might not always be in the means location. Okay, I just want to have three proportions here dealing with x, y, and z. Uh, if I look at y, y is a leg, so it's the geometric mean, so it should go there and there. Now it's the geometric mean between the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is going to be that distance there. So I'm going to put x here. And now part of the hypotenuse that's touching y. Well, that's going to be the part of the hypotenuse that's touching y, so 6 goes there. Okay, I, I, at the onset, maybe I was trying to solve for x right away. I can't do that. Okay, you see this, this two-variable equation now. Um, so now I go to the next proportion. The next proportion is to look at that thing right there. It's the altitude. So it's the geometric mean. So 8 is there and there. And this might be the first time we've seen this, that the geometric mean is not a variable. And it doesn't have to be. It can be anything it wants to be. It can be a number. It can be a variable. It can be binomial, trinomial, whatever. Here it's just 8 and 8. But that altitude is a geometric mean between that part, 6, and then this part here, which if the total is x, and I've already used 6, this would be x minus 6. That one you can solve for x. And then once you solve for x, you can plug that back in over here and solve for y. I need to do the one with z. So g, z is a leg. So put z here and z there. Now it's the leg between, or the geometric mean between the hypotenuse, which was x, and the part of the hypotenuse, that part there that touches the green, which would be, again, we had x minus 6 there. Uh, again, you have to solve this one for x before you can start dealing with that one for z.